Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimzeski here with Adam Atkinson. Today we're going to talk about pumping up. So that's always even been a funny phrase to me ever since I got into the sport, like pumping up. I almost call it, you know, warming up or something like that. But the, the real value, and this gets into the language, is that you do want to drive the most hydration and blood flow into muscle tissue when you need it, but this is a very dynamic process. There are ways you can actually make yourself look worse on stage, a lot to consider. So uh, Adam, I know I, I, you and I are pretty much synced on just about every topic and I, I doubt this is gonna be any different. So when a client asks you how to pump up backstage, what do you generally tell them? Yeah, so um, there's a few steps with that process. The first is, do we need a pump up meal? So. Um, if the client recently ate and the show's coming up much faster than we expected, I might have them roll right into pumping up versus actually having like a piece of candy or something like that because they already have that um, circulating glycogen they can use during that pump up and we don't want, you know, more coming in and, and risk the chance of spillover if they don't need it. So that's always the first consideration. Are we doing any food before the pump up? Um, any salt or water. Um, and then also on top of that, making sure they pump up maybe the right muscle groups for their division. Um, a big mistake I see a lot of guys do is uh, they pump up their legs, which can actually almost bring too much blood to the leg. It can make it hard to pose. It can actually even shade the detail in the quads. Um, so making sure that they pump up the right areas and also making sure the length of time is appropriate for the pump up as well. Um, many times I see clients pumping up, you know, maybe an hour before they're actually going to be on stage. So you really have to pay attention to the size of the classes ahead of you. Um, if there's a list, that's very helpful. If, if you're a class B bikini and class A only has two girls, you may as well say that class doesn't even exist before you go on. So really looking at the timing and making sure you don't pop up so long that you're losing glucose outside the muscle cell and that can actually make you spill over as well. So kind of looking into the timing is a huge, huge consideration. Yeah, you're bringing up a lot of things that make me think we're going to have to extend this into a couple different episodes, which is great. But let's uh, let's save for the next episode the actual technical how-to, you know, what mm -hmm. exercises and all that. You you brought up first uh, the the timing of nutrients, and and I think we'll we'll stick there for the rest of this episode. Um, you mentioned if you don't need a meal, don't force it. You know, more carbs in your stomach 20 minutes before is it necessarily going to help you? So I know hydration at that point is best. And if you're pumping up and you're just not feeling the blood flow, you're not seeing vascularity, you're remaining tight and just small feeling, you really need hydration more than anything. And I've had clients drink as much as three or four liters, that's a gallon of water, just while they're pumping up, only to look better on stage, fuller, more separated, you're not spilling over with that water, you're just getting fuller. So that's an important point. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as the actual considerations for the food you might consume, you know, there, there are a lot of things you could choose, but knowing what you've had previously, as Adam said, is important. And then what might be the smallest, best, most direct thing now? And I've had people, even though it's kind of a cliche, you know, using wine or alcohol, not because one ounce of alcohol is going to do anything magically to dry you out, but it's just a little bit of sugar in a small liquid amount that gets in your body quickly with, with a, just that much impact. So what, what other small tricks do you have as far as what you might use, Adam? Yes, yeah, so wine is definitely a great one. Um, it also can be good for somebody that maybe gets nervous on stage. Wine can be a good relaxant as well. Um, I do want to say some venues ban wine, so you have to be careful with that. Um, just in case, I've never seen anyone get dinged for it, but you never know. Um, I don't want anyone in the podcast saying, Doug, on it, you made me drink wine and <laughs> got arrested. I qualified. But um, one of my favorite foods is a peanut butter cup. It's nice and easy. It's a little bit of, uh, you know, carbs and a little bit of fat just to be able to prime the pump, so to speak. 
and, and sodium. Uh, and yeah, also too, uh, I'll have clients use salt during the pump up as well, just to make sure that if there were any kind of spillover that from pumping up that that salt helps keep them tight during the pump up if they were to overdo it. Okay. All right, guys, we will stop for this episode, but catch us next time. And we're going to go into the technical aspects of pumping up. We'll catch you next time.